of um, social media managers in our ministry from um, around the world to share content and strategies and things like this. And we were um, excited that this, uh, uh, this session, we were originally planning it for um, a communi communication um, conference, but now we've, de we've decided to open the doors to um, more staff and volunteers who just like to, to learn about social media. So we're excited in a weird way. We got to um, open this up to more people. Maddie uh, has graciously um, decided to continue making her presentation and making it available for us. Um, just to introduce her, Maddie um, is on the Power to Change students um, social media team in Canada. She's a cat lover, um, a content creator, and um, I, I asked her to do this because I, I felt that their team does a really wonderful job of creating resonant content um, for today's generation that also um, shares and conveys um, God's heart well. So um, they're a great example for us. Um, we're excited to learn today. If you have questions as we go along, please um, paste them in the chat and we will come to them all at the end. So um, I will be gathering them and, um, and we'll give them to Maddie at the end. So um, with that off, I'm gonna pass the baton to Maddie to start us out. So. Sounds good. Thanks for that, Erin, appreciate it. And yeah, this is a, a unique opportunity that we have to be able to meet like this with people from all over the world. It's nine o'clock in the morning here where I am in Ottawa, Canada. Don't know what time it is for you, but we're glad that you could make it here today. Uh, I know that we are recording this presentation and I can also share the slide deck that I have here with you afterwards. So if you're trying to take notes and you don't quite catch something, that's okay. There'll be a way that you can access this afterwards as well. Can you see the screen that I have up? Good, sweet. I use Zoom a little bit, but I'm more familiar with Google. <laughs> but this enables us to do some good things too. So yeah, as Erin said, I'm Maddie. I'm the social media manager for P2C students in Canada. And I've been working in the social media realm for three or four years now. Um, yeah, we have a little social media team in our ministry. So it's myself. I do most of the day-to-day -day operations, taking different like content requests and um, creating some content, working with a few different people to make that happen. Um, and then also Matt Brody, who's in here somewhere too. He runs our paid ads and he's our analytics specialist. So we have some different areas. Um, but then we also work with a few other people in our creative communications department. So we get a lot of help with photography, writing content, graphic design, videography. So it's very much a team effort. I don't have skills in all of those other areas. Um, so it is very helpful if you do have a team and you can kind of work with each other's skill sets. Yeah, so this, uh, this webinar that we're doing, um, unfortunately, we couldn't meet in person for the communication summit that was planned for March. But yeah, as Erin was saying, now we can open it up for more people. Um, so I'm happy to share some of the things that we've been learning uh, with our social media team, doing strategy, creating content, thinking of your audience. Um, so hopefully something in here is useful for you no matter where you're at. Um, I also was going to share like some of my credentials. Um, I have some of my degrees on the wall behind me. One of them is my husband's, but um, so like I have a bachelor's in arts and communications and a master's of arts in communications. And then I was going to share uh, like my personal social media experience so I can go back all the way to 2003 using MSN Messenger or 2005 when I was on MySpace. Um, so then Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. I have TikTok, but I don't create anything. I just watch things. Um, so social media has been a part of my personal life for a long time and now has been a part of my professional life for a few years. Um, so social media, as you know, is very well integrated into many people's everyday lives now. Um, I see there's a chat. I should open that too, just in case something's come up too. Um, 
Yes, MySpace, good times. A digital native, you could say. Yes, I'm 27. Um, so I do have some, well, I'm not a, a Gen Z, I'm a millennial. I'm like the older edge of millennials, but anywho, that's a bit about me and my history. So before we jump into this presentation, I also want to acknowledge that I'm coming from a Canadian context. So a lot of the examples that I might share are particular to what we use and experience here in Canada. So there might be some things that you have to swap out or use your own examples for. So I apologize if some of these things aren't making as much sense for you, but hopefully uh, you can still take some of the, um, the principles and suggestions that I share. So for this presentation, there's a few different things I want to go through. So first, I have a few like getting started questions that you can be asking yourself. Um, second, we'll be talking about setting and measuring goals. And then at the end, I'll share a few more extra best practices per platform. So for, yeah, social media strategy, it's good generally just to be intentional about your strategy on social media. You want to make sure that you are using the right platforms to reach the right kinds of people, using the right kind of content. Um, so there are some questions that you might want to ask yourself as you're uh, getting started. So yeah, for some of you, you might be just getting started with social media or you might have a new team that you're kind of figuring things out with. Um, you might be launching something new. Maybe you've been doing the same old thing for a long time and you haven't really paused to think about how things are going. Um, maybe you've had to make a lot of adjustments in light of COVID-19. There could be a lot of reasons you're coming into this. Um, but hopefully, um, yeah, these are questions that you can be asking no matter where you're at. So, whoops, I hit something wrong. There we go. So the first question you want to ask is why? Start with your why. Um, there will be a lot of text on the screens, but there will be some pictures later, don't worry. Uh, so ask yourself some of these questions. So why does your ministry as a whole exist? What are you trying to accomplish? And why might you need social media for your specific ministry? So your answer to these questions might be pretty big and broad, or they might be more specific and focused. Um, so for an example, I can show you what <clears throat> ours is for P2C students. So if we look at our why our big picture our mission statement for our ministry um, which has changed a little bit in the last year or so but we form diverse communities that help students discover the relevance of jesus for all of life so some of the core elements of our mission statement are community discipleship evangelism sharing jesus uh, preparing young people for a lifetime of ministry then within our ministry, we have a creative communications department, which is the area that I work in. And we also have a purpose statement for our department specifically. So that statement is, we help students know Jesus and live for him by shaping culture, producing innovative resources and designing experiences where life change happens. Kind of a mouthful. Um, but then we can go even zoomed in even more. So for our social media team, we decided we should have a bit of a purpose statement as well. So through social media, we are digitally inviting people into experiences where life change happens so they can discover Jesus and live for him. So we have the big picture mission statement, our creative communications purpose statement, and then an even more specific purpose statement for social media. So we do see that we are able to do things digitally to connect with our audiences, to be inviting them to read a blog post, come to this event, um, check out this resource we have, go on a mission trip. We're inviting people into these different experiences where we hope they will have um, a changed life or an impact from that. So for you, some potential whys you might have for your social media, you could be using it to connect with your target audience, to communicate information to people who are involved, uh, maybe you're doing direct evangelism online. You might just want to be using it as a way to point people to your website or to get them to subscribe to your emails, things like that. Um, 
Maybe you're just wanting to share lots of updates or invite people to events or to engage with alumni. There could be a whole range of whys. So this is the starting point to think about, okay, why do we exist as a ministry? Why would we need social media as well? And the next you can go into who. So who are you trying to speak to or connect with or create content for? Uh, yeah, so you can ask yourself questions about who your target audience is, or maybe you have multiple target audiences and that's okay. Um, yeah, start to think about what they're like and who they are. So what might they be looking for online? What would they want to see from a brand or an organization? Uh, so a few potential who's that you might have uh, for us and P2C students, our main one is students in Canada who are Gen Z. So a few things about them, it's that like they're young, they're fun, they want community, um, they go online partly to be entertained, partly to waste time. Um, they don't really want to be explicitly sold to or marketed to, uh, so they're looking for organizations to be more personable. So that's, there's a lot more that could be said to that, but those are just some general things you could be thinking of. Um, maybe your, your main who is donors, you're trying to connect with donors mostly, or supporters for the ministry. Um, so they might be like older adults, they might be just looking for news and updates, um, they want to be inspired, they could go online to make connections with others or to get updates, um, and they might be looking for organizations that they can trust. Now your who might also be non-Christians, um, and again there can be some variation here. There could be some who are very hostile, um, others that might be very curious about the Christian faith. Uh, they could be going online looking for answers, or they could be looking uh, to challenge other people's views. Uh, they might be looking for an organization to be real and reliable. Um, so there's a few different types of who's that you might be dealing with or working with. A few things I want to show you here. So Crew has created this audience grid, uh, which I think is brilliant. I don't know how many of you are familiar with it. Um, but essentially, this is a way for them to organize how uh, people kind of like journey with them digitally or what kind of people they might be encountering online um, and creating like little profiles around them to understand who these different types of people are based on they have two different grids. So from uh, like their level of involvement or their level of benefit. Uh, with crew. So there's like none, like they aren't aware of crew at all uh, to profound. So they're like actively engaged with the crew community. Um, and then the other scale is like their spiritual journey or their belief. So they could be unaware, like not a Christian, maybe they're even like averse to religion, all the way to a guide. Uh, which is somebody who's a Christian, maybe they're serving in full-time ministry or they're training disciples and then a whole range of people in between there. Uh, so each of these different types of people would have different levels of uh, receptivity to things that crew shares online. Um, so each interaction with each of these different types of people would require a different level of effort um, to connect with them or to like move them along um, in the journey. Uh, so it's good to have a person or people in mind that you want to be reaching. So for this example, crew has chosen like a few different types of people on this grid that they want to be focusing on. There's more details about this in a whole document somewhere. If you're interested, we can pass it along to you. <laughs> Aaron can help you with that. Another interesting thing uh, that Aaron also passed on to me is these target audience personas or like persona profiles. Um, this is a great learning exercise because us and Power to Change students, we just started creating these in the last couple months. It is quite a process, but it's very useful to think through, okay, who are the specific types of people that we are reaching or we want to be reaching and kind of fleshing it out even more um, to have things like just some of their basic information, like their age, their city, what they're studying, uh, what they're 
like worldview is or their spiritual maturity, um, things that they're searching for online, things that they want. Uh, you can't see the whole image here, but there's also like the media that they use or the best, best way to reach them. Um, and then just like a nice little bio describing what they're like. So this is super interesting to know and to have uh, handy for you to use in your ministry. So for P2C students, we've been starting to work on these. We've been working with um, kind of similar to the scale of belief. We have five thresholds of engagement that people move through from being an unbeliever to a follower of Jesus. We also have yeah level of involvement with P2C different demographics of students, like are they a first year? Are they a master student? Are they an international student? And then things like their program, their ethnicity, the city they live in, things like that. So in creating a persona profile like this, you can have a person or type of person in mind when you're creating content and planning out your communications through social media. Cool, and I see people are sharing some stuff in the chat too. Good stuff. So that's the who. Next, you can go into your what. So after looking at your why, thinking through a bit more specifically about your who, then you can think about what kind of content would uh, be best to be shared online to accomplish your purposes and what kind of format or style would be best to reach that certain group of people too. And again, if you have multiple whys and multiple who's, then you could also have multiple what's as well. Uh, so a few examples. So if, you're, if your goal or your why is you're just communicating information to people who are involved in your ministry, maybe this is more at uh, like a local level for a student-led ministry, then you'd be wanting to share things just like consistent updates on when and where meetings are happening or special events or opportunities like mission trips. So it'd be more information based. Uh, if you're doing things like evangelism online uh, and you're wanting to reach people to share the gospel with them more directly, uh, then the what you would need to do is to do something to start a conversation or to answer their questions or to invite them into something. So that could be like sharing a blog post about topics that are designed for people who are curious or are new to faith. Uh, it could be a post that invites people to comment with questions that they have about Christianity or about Jesus. Uh, or you could create a paid ad and have like an intriguing question that ties to a felt need that you think your audience might have. So that would be more like inviting conversation. Uh, another what if you're just trying to invite people to events, if that's the main thing you use your social media for, then yeah, you'd want to have things like registration pages or event pages on social media. Maybe you have a promotional video so people know what to expect. Um, again, you could use paid ads to try to reach new people. So you can see they all kind of flow together. The what should be built off of your why and your who. Next, you want to think about where you should be sharing your content. So again, thinking of what would your audience like? What would be best for them? Where are they spending their time online? Um, how do they use certain social media platforms? And where's the best place to try to get a hold of them? So a few potential where's uh, for maybe you're using Facebook and we're finding for us, we have less of our main target audience there. So it's not as many current university students, but it's more alumni or staff or donors for our ministry. So there's still some people on there that we can connect with. Um, people usually go to Facebook to look for news or uh, to use Messenger to connect with people, they'll respond to events. So there's a few different specific types of things that would be well suited for Facebook on Instagram. That's where we're putting more of our effort these days because that's where our main target audience is. So for that, people are usually going there uh, for inspiration or for some fun or to be entertained. Uh, sometimes it's to see updates from their friends. Uh, another where could be YouTube. This is something we're just starting to rethink our strategy for. Um, but YouTube is actually 
based on like amount of time spent. It's the most popular social media platform in North America, I know at least. Um, so this is a big one. So if you have capacity for YouTube and you have videographers that can help you out with that, um, this is a, a good area to get into as well. So usually people are going to YouTube to learn how to do something or to see tutorials. They might also be going there for entertainment. Sometimes there's like specific YouTubers that they follow. Um, and then another where that you might be using is something that's more direct or one-to-one. -one. So things like direct messaging or email, which you could be using for like having conversations or doing online evangelism. Um, maybe you could even use them for fundraising and maybe that's your focus. Um, so yeah, direct messaging is more private or personal. So again, depends on what you're wanting to do. It's also good to think through where would be the best suited place for it. I have a couple other things to share about where. Oh no, I have a couple things about when. Never mind. The next one is when. <laughs> so again, a few questions you can ask here. Um, and yes, you're welcome to share questions, but we'll get to them at the end. So for when, again, this is a, a good thing that you should just be thinking through a little bit on what your audience might be, what might be best for your audience, uh, what time of day or week you should be posting to your social media platforms, and when would a typical person in your target audience be online. Um, so it could be like first thing in the morning or over lunch break or in the evenings, or maybe you get more engagement on the weekends compared to weekdays. Uh, there's a way that you can learn some of these ones. So you can look to some of your analytics. This is an example of what it looks like on Facebook. If you go into insights uh, under posts, you can see these different charts on when people are online and engaging with your content. So it's just good to see um, generally what people are doing and when they're engaging. For us, it's mostly pretty steady after 9 a.m. throughout the day, um, but then in the evening, there's a, a little peak. No one's really on in the middle of the night. This is for Facebook, at least. Uh, so you can do that too. I imagine that they have similar kind of insights on other social media platforms too. So you can look into what has been happening and when would be a good time. Okay, here's my extra things on when. Uh, so another thing that you might not know, or you might know, is Hootsuite is a wonderful tool that you can use to plan ahead and schedule your social media posts. So it's both useful for like tracking or seeing what all is out there, even doing some social listening, but it's also great for scheduling posts ahead of time and staying organized. So for example, if you only work Monday to Friday, nine to five, then you can actually schedule things for the evenings or the weekends. So we use this, as you can see, this is just our P2C students, Facebook, Instagram, uh, and Twitter. Um, this was for last week, scheduling ahead for Easter weekend content. Uh, we also have social media accounts, not only just for our national ministry, but also for our conference, P2C Plus, our podcasts, which is P2C students podcast network, that's the long version. Um, and then our apologetics team, which is ultimate questions. So we have a lot of things that we want to be able to track and schedule content to. So this is a very useful tool because you can keep it all in one place. Uh, we also have uh, campus ministry specific pages from across the country. We have like 30 or 40. So we're able to see things for all of those there too. And sometimes there's something we want to blast out to all the campuses. So we're able to use this tool and do that. And yeah, if you're interested in getting set up with Hootsuite, Erin can hook you up. I recommend it. <laughs> uh, there are some limitations though, because there's a few things you have to still share manually, like on Instagram, if you have a post that has multiple images that you have to swipe through, or if you have like a video or an IGTV, those I believe you still have to do manually unless there's a tool that I haven't learned how to use yet. But um, generally, this is really helpful for scheduling out posts. Another thing about when that I wanted to talk about briefly here uh, is when to shift or to be aware 
of things that are going on. So as a social media manager, you sometimes have to shift paths or change directions uh, to speak to some of the current needs or situation in your location or just things that are happening in culture today. So obviously the COVID-19 pandemic changed things worldwide. Uh, it's, it's a trauma that's being experienced around the world. People now have different realities and priorities and needs and concerns uh, that they didn't have before this all started. So people might be more worried about actually getting the virus and getting sick themselves. Uh, some are like losing work and wages. So they have some financial struggles. Uh, some are just like grieving the loss of the personal freedom that they once had or travel being canceled, other personal life things that they can't do anymore. Uh, others are dealing with anxiety or mental health difficulties that come with being isolated. So there's a lot of change and difference in what people are experiencing and going through now. So if all of this was happening and your ministry or organization was just continuing on as usual, while something big like this is happening, then you're kind of missing out on an opportunity uh, to really speak to people and where they're at. And you might actually look a little bit like insensitive or naive if you're not shifting things um, to adapt when something big like this is happening. So for us in P2C students, there were a few things that we've had to change recently, just in terms of the content that we were putting out, some of the imagery that we were using, um, and some of the, the things that we we're preparing to share. So for example, we were planning to do uh, a whole series on spiritual rhythms in the spring semester once students were done classes. So planning that for May and June. But then all of this happened and students are at home more, they don't have as much community, they have all this time and they might not know how to use it well. So we decided to shift that series on spiritual rhythms or spiritual disciplines earlier on to better meet some of the needs that students currently have. Um, another thing, so this second image here of our Instagram post, we had this post planned before COVID-19 happened and we had to move all of our ministry online because schools were closed and we had to just change everything. So we already had this post planned saying some nice things about community and we still wanted to share it, but instead of just sharing it as is, we added in this paragraph about how community is an important piece and how God has designed us as human beings. We'll miss face-to-face -face community in this season, but we're ready to find creative ways, finding new ways to connect. How are you finding community right now? So with that, we just had to tweak it a little bit to be a bit more sensitive to what people are going through. As well, we've just been sharing things like resources that can help meet some practical needs. Like we created a blog post and some templates with like daily schedules that people can use and fill in. Uh, we also did a, a giveaway recently to give out gift cards so that they can order food through Skip the Dishes, which is a delivery service. So for that, we just wanted to encourage them and to be generous, do something that brightened a few students' days when they won. And we've done a few fun things too. So in our Instagram stories, you've just been engaging in some fun things. Um, we did one where they like got to fill in their day using gifts, like what does your day look like? Uh, we had a, a bingo card about their involvement with P2C. So these are some of the things that I was just noticing were going around personally at the time. And we were able to make versions that fit in with our ministry. Um, yeah, so there's been a lot that has changed in the last month or so, and that impacts what you do on social media. Um, so it's good for you guys to be keeping your ear to the ground, to know what the conversation is online, and to be imagining what your audience might be experiencing at the time. So it's good for social media teams to be adaptable and to be able to get creative in serving your audience and the needs that they have. So that's just a little extra thing on, on when. And there's been a lot of really neat things coming out of um, this whole situation. So you might also have some examples of things that you've seen ministries doing well at this time.
that's the first section and that's the longest section that I had to go through. Um, so next we're going to get into talking about setting and measuring goals. Some of these terms you might be familiar with, others might be completely new to you. So we're going to be looking at wigs, lead and lag measures, and social media unicorns, which is a fun concept. So starting with wigs. Uh, so a wig is a wildly important goal. Um, when you're making goals, it means that you have something that you're working towards. Um, and it's also good because then you can have something that you can share about the impact that you're having if you have something that you're aiming for. Uh, there's probably some ministry leaders in your ministry that are quite interested to know what's happening online and what kind of traction and traffic you're getting through your online efforts. So with your wildly important goal, uh, you just want to be thinking about what do you really care about or want to see happen through your social media strategy. Uh, for us and P2C students in the last year or two, we've been trying to figure out what deeper digital engagement looks like. So we're trying to figure out how we can even measure that or encourage that to happen. So that's been our, our kind of phrase for the last few years of what we're aiming for is to have deeper digital engagement. Um, but how can you measure that? There could be a few different ways. And so last year, our wig was to increase our overall impressions on social media, uh, on all of our posts by 30%. I think we didn't quite reach it, but we did some good things throughout the year to work towards it. So a few wigs that um, you could choose or might be options for you. You could be focusing on increasing your followers on social media, especially if you're just getting started. Uh, you could want to increase your direct messages uh, through chat. You might want to increase your search traffic on your website if you want to be connecting your social media to website as well, or even things like decreasing your bounce rate. So there could be a whole range of things um, that you could be focusing on and working towards. But so for yeah, us with P2C students, since that was our overall goal to increase impressions, um, that's really getting at, we want to be sharing content that is engaging and adds value to the people who do follow us on social media. So you take some time to think through, okay, what's my wig? What's the one big thing that we care about or want to be working towards this year? And then you can think through some lead and lag measures to help you work towards that goal. I guess the lead measure helps you do that a bit more. Josh Wong, my supervisor, is much more equipped to talk about these things. So if I don't explain something quite properly, Josh might be able to help us later. <laughs> uh, so for these, um, they help you to see like what can we be doing along the way to reach that wake. So lead measures are things that you can do or you can control or you can impact. So for example, like posting a certain number of times per week to a certain social media platform or spending a certain amount of money on paid ads or sharing a certain number of videos or doing a certain number of contests, things that you can plan out and actually do. Lag measures on the other hand, track your success. So there are things that you measure afterwards and there are things that you hope to see happen. So this could be, yeah, seeing an increase in followers on your social media, seeing an increase in impressions, um, seeing a certain number of decisions made for Christ through online conversations if you're doing more direct evangelism. Uh, one thing that we were doing is capturing a story of impact each month. So that's more of like a qualitative yeah, qualitative measure, um, instead of having like a specific number of some things, just having a story that we can capture to share that somebody was impacted by a blog post or a video that we shared. Um, and I don't have a ton of time to go into great detail on these things and how you can measure them and um, how you can track them and report on them. So you might have to look into another webinar. There was one somewhat recently on metrics. Um, so I know that there are others out there if you want to go a bit deeper into that. Um, and my colleague Matt is great at 
tracking all these things. He's the one that sets up all our reports and does Data Studio and works with Google Analytics and knows a bit about SEO. So that's his area too. So if you have questions, he might be able to answer them or point you to a resource. Um, and then after you come up with these things, your WIG and your lead and your lag measures, and you have a way to track them or to store them somewhere, it's good to review it every once in a while. So for a while we were doing a weekly social media team meeting um, and we would have like a monthly strategic meeting. So that's just a good time to connect with your team, to see how it's going, to learn from some of the things you've been doing and to see if you have to shift or make any changes to continue working towards your wig. The next thing is our social media unicorns. Aaron introduced me to this concept a few years ago. Um, I think it first came from a social media training by Larry Kim, but I think other people use this concept now too in social media marketing. So a social media unicorn is an especially high performing post on social media. Um, so these are posts that stand out from your average. They'll probably only be about like 10% of your overall posts that you put out there. So they're pretty rare. They don't come up too, too often, um, but they are posts that you can pay attention to and you can learn from. Uh, for us, we started tracking our unicorns a year or two ago. Um, so just kind of being aware of what kind of posts would stand out. Um, we have a system set up in our Google Data Studio that Matt has put together, but this was just me taking a glance at our Facebook insights. Um, after looking at our average over a year or so, we determined that any post on Facebook that had over 2,000 impressions was a post that stood out as a unicorn. So for this example, it was a contest, no surprise, because that encourages people to comment and to like and to tag their friends. So we did get quite a bit engagement on there. So this was one of our unicorns. And then once you discover what your unicorns are, there's two things that you can do with them. First thing you can do is send them to the moon. So this is about like boosting a post or putting some money on a post once it already has some of that organic engagement already, because you don't want to send a donkey to the moon. <laughs> That's part of the whole analogy of it. Um, I don't know why they have to go to a moon. There's a whole narrative to it. Um, but essentially, most of your social media posts that you put out there are going to be average. They're more like donkeys. Um, ones that don't really stand out as special. They don't particularly take off with your audience. It performs okay. Um, so it's better and it's more effective if you invest your paid ad money in those high performing posts rather than trying to put a little bit of money in all of the posts. So once you have the unicorn, you can send it to the moon, put a bit of money on it, you can go a bit further. The second thing you can do is create baby unicorns. So from this, it's essentially if you see that uh, a certain post has done well, there's something in that post that will likely do well again if you create another post similar to that. So it could be the topic or it could be the format. Um, so you could create more content that's similar to that theme or similar to that format and it will likely do well again. So for us in P2C students, we've learned things like topics on mental health or topics on relationships in our blog tend to do well, any pictures or stories from real people involved in our ministry does well. Um, if we do giveaways, particularly if they're meaningful giveaways, like a ticket to our fall retreat for free, um, or also bubble tea, people love free food. Um, yeah, we've just kind of learned over time that some of those things tend to do well. So another example here, at the start of the year, Lots of campuses are doing different welcome orientation week events, letting people know about our community that's on campus. So I just looked at a bunch of different campus pages that had posted some nice group pictures, saved them, 
wrote up something nice about us and had a little swipe through so you could see different pictures from campus. And this one stood out as a unicorn. So we said, okay, we should do things like this again. So after our fall retreat, we did it again. There are campuses um, all across Canada that were at different fall retreats. So There's lots of great group pictures, um, lots of team spirit, beautiful locations. So again, got a few of those pictures as a swipe through and it also did well. I think it got even more like likes and engagement than the original unicorn post. So sometimes the unicorn baby turns into a unicorn itself and you can just continue learning and improving the content that you're putting out there. So recognizing your unicorns and learning from them might take a bit of time. Uh, we've been tracking our posts for like engagement and reach for a couple years now. So we are able to like anticipate which kind of posts will be likely to get uh, significantly more impressions or traction. Um, so it might take a bit of time for you to, to sort that out, but you might already know which kind of posts usually turn out to be unicorns for you and your ministry. Okay. So getting to the end here, just wanted to share a few extra best practices per platform. And we could go much deeper for all of these. So I just wanted to highlight a few things and then we'll wrap up and might have a bit of time for questions. So for Facebook, if you're using Facebook, um, people are usually spending time here because they want to be informed or entertained. Um, as an organization, it's okay for you to be posting multiple times a day to Facebook. Um, when we are posting a lot, we usually do like three posts a day. Sometimes we only do one post a day. Depends on what's going on. With Facebook, it's good to be responsive to your messages because it actually shows up on your Facebook page, like the anticipated response time that you usually get. And you can also check your insights on Facebook and learn from them. It's pretty easy to navigate. It's built right in to Facebook. Um, so you might be able to learn some things by going into the insights. Instagram, people are usually going here because they want to be inspired. So you want to be connecting to people's emotions as an organization. Uh, you want to be authentic and personable, which is something we've been trying to work on a bit more this past year or so. With Instagram, it's better if you post a little less frequently but higher quality content. So for us, it looks like three or four posts a week. Sometimes those posts are videos. Sometimes those posts our graphic designer helps out with. Um, so it's good to put just a bit more thought and care into uh, your Instagram posts. Another thing is to have both variety and consistency in your feed. Um, so to be thinking about like how the feed overall looks like, which this also has only been a thing we've been thinking about more in the last year or so. Um, so we try to have a bit of variety in the different kinds of posts that we have. So for us, we've been having like one post that's a story, one post that's a microblog, one that's more art or photography, and then one that's like explicitly promotional or marketing so that it's not all promotional and marketing. We have some other things along the way that are adding value. Um, and we've had some more thought put into the like look and feel of our feed. So like how many pictures of faces, how many pictures do you want to have text on them? Um, putting the same filter on all of the photos so it kind of has the same look when somebody comes to our feed. Uh, another thing is to be engaging with your audience using Instagram stories. We found this is a good way to actually get people to respond to us. Um, yeah, in stories, it's more private than people commenting on your actual post. So people might be more comfortable engaging with you here. Um, so you can do things like polls, or you can ask a question, or you can put gifts in there. So it's just like a more fun, personable way that you can be engaging with your audience. And then another last thing with Instagram is to get into video and IGTV if you haven't yet. Um, just because video is huge and people like watching video and the platforms favor video sometimes too. So we've even had videos that we've just made on like somebody's iPhone. It doesn't always have to be super high quality produced. If you have capacity for that, that's great. 
Um, but there are some things that you can do fairly simply and it's okay to share on Instagram. Next one for Twitter. We use Twitter. We don't put as much thought and effort into it these days because Instagram is the one where we're putting a bit more intentionality into, but we still have Twitter. Um, when people go on Twitter, they're usually looking for what's happening or what's new. It's okay as an organization to tweet and retweet often, if multiple times a day, that's okay. Um, it's good to be searching for trending hashtags, and if you're able to jump into the conversation, that's a good thing to do. Uh, it could be like a special day or a special holiday, or there's some campaign going on, or there's some event going on. Um, if there's a way that you can insert yourself into there, you might be able to get discovered by some new people. Influencers on Twitter can be pretty powerful, so it's good to tag or engage with influencers um, if it makes sense or if you have connections to some. Um, so it could be like a speaker at a conference. For us, we also have podcasts, so sometimes it's our guests on our podcasts have quite a big following. Um, worship bands that you're connected to, different people like that. Um, so if they retweet you, it could be powerful and new people could discover you and the content that you're putting out. Uh, and then the last channel I'll share quickly about is YouTube. So people are coming to YouTube because they want to learn something, usually. Um, it's good to have a consistent publishing schedule for YouTube, so to have regular content that's coming out. Uh, for YouTube, it's also good to have specific like branding things created. So to have thumbnails that are specific to YouTube where you can still see like the title of the video or maybe an image of the person who's in it. Um, it's good to have like unified branding with your like banner and things that are on your homepage too. Uh, and then with YouTube, SEO is key because it essentially works like a, a search platform similar to Google. So it's good to put some thought into that as well, to have uh, keywords, um, good keywords for your titles and descriptions. And yes, I see Erin's comment. We're not talking about TikTok here, but she did put on a good webinar earlier this year about that too. We have not dove in to the TikTok world, just kind of looked around for fun. Um, yeah, so that's all I have for the best practices, extra best practices. Um, and that's about it that I have for you in the way of this formal presentation. Um, if you're interested in seeing what we're doing on social media, I think I saw Matt had shared some links to our social media accounts in there, but our main one is just P2C students on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, yeah, hopefully something in there was helpful for you or got you thinking, or maybe there's new things that you want to be exploring now. But that's what I've got for you today. That was awesome and a, a great, yeah, kind of compre comprehensive overview of what it looks like to get started. I um, collected a few questions from our audience and, um, James with AIA is wondering, um, would you say it's important to have a dedicated team or person for social media? It can definitely be a full-time job for one person or multiple persons. <laughs> um, I think if you have capacity, like if you have the human resource for it, like if somebody is available to do social media full-time, um, it would be a useful thing. I do social media plus some other things, and Matt also does analytics for social media plus some other things. So we even are not completely full-time in just social media, and there's already a lot to do. Um, so it also might depend on the scale of your ministry as well. Like if it's uh, on a more local level, it might only be a few hours a week, and that might be all that you need. If it's on a national level or there's multiple platforms and pages, it might be useful to have somebody who could engage full time um, to be putting a bit of thought into more of the strategy, responding to messages if you're getting a lot, stuff like that. So it depends, but social media can be full time job. Yeah. 
Yeah, just as, yeah, you can see there's a lot you can do to expand into the space and just with more focused effort, I think you can, um, you know, do a more quality job. You can create um, interesting content. Um, I know this year the crew team in Orlando had, you know, I think a intern or volunteer whose role was like just to do Twitter engagement. Um, and even like things like these types of roles can be broken down across um, volunteers and teams. So um, different aspects of the job don't, doesn't have to be so weighty. So um, another question, um, is there a course or training we can go through to learn how we can develop personas well? And um, I shared um, a little while ago back in the chat, kind of a worksheet. And, and I saw Cheryl posted the, the link to the Crew Digital Academy YouTube channel. Um, we'll repost that in there. Is, is there anything for you guys, Maddie, that has been helpful for onboarding people? With personas specifically? Personas or training, yeah, any resources that you guys have? Personas, we've basically been using the things you've shared with us, Erin, and just kind of making it up as we go. <laughs> I think we all um, keep copying and recycling things from around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so There's yeah. a few other documents that we've had to reference with like good questions to ask and a few like formatting options. So I could find that and share that too, but we didn't have like a formal training that we went to. We just kind of formed a little team, had a lot of meetings together to talk it through. Um, talk to different campus staff who are more closely connected to the audiences that we're trying to reach. Did a bit of research on just like some stats about students and Gen Z and technology use, faith and religion in Canada, stuff like that. Um, so there's a bit of research you can do along the way for forming those two. In the way of training, um, sometimes Hootsuite puts out some like good blogs, sometimes videos. We, over the last few years, we've been using Social Media Examiner. Um, there's like a society subscription you can get and they have a whole bunch of online webinars that they do throughout the year. Um, this year we got a virtual ticket to their conference. So we have a whole bunch of webinars that we can watch whenever we feel like it. So that's one that we've used and we've enjoyed. There's a cost to it, but um, if you have budget, that's one that's pretty solid. Uh, they're in the States, so it might be a more American context. That might be something to keep in mind, too. Good stuff, yeah. Yeah, chances are there. Um, I know it differs by context, but um, there are probably marketing, content, news, um, newsletters, email, kind of things you can subscribe to to get info on what's trending um, for the US they're my favorite one it's called the the internet brunch and they send kind of a daily digest of what's happened in pop culture and what Gen Z is thinking about um, it's but it's yeah it's a more US kind of specific context um, yeah maybe yeah there those things exist in your country as well I wanted to add um, this question what types of content do you see performing well in this day and age? Like what's, what's hot right now? <laughs> Generally, or that we found for us? Maybe both. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're finding things that are either very like representative of our ministry. So like people who are actually involved, people get excited to see themselves or their friends or their staff. So we usually, get a lot of engagement um, and excitement on those ones. Videos tend to do quite well for us too. They're just a bit more engaging. Um, and I think that's true across the board. Uh, like that just video is more engaging, but there's different like style tips for video these days too. Like it has to be like shorter and snappier. You have to catch people's attention in like the first three seconds or they might not watch the whole thing. Um, so I would love to dive deeper into video. We only have one full-time video person in our department right now, so we don't have too much capacity to explore it. But yeah, I think video is probably like the biggest in terms of like type of content. Um, 
Yeah. And things that are just more personable so that you don't just appear as a general organization, but that there's actually people behind it. So any things that show like behind the scenes or like letting people do takeovers. We sometimes let our staff or our students do a takeover of our Instagram account. And those are always fun to see. And they're things that I couldn't capture on my own because I'm not on a certain campus somewhere else. I'm not at whatever conference they're having in that city. So that's another good thing to do is to just get more personal in your brand. I totally agree with all of that. Um, I've also seen like Instagram templates, those things you can like screenshot and reshare with your own gifts. Like people really love yeah. that. Polls. Um, oh, podcasts. Um, in the Philippines, our ministry, um, their, their podcast has now overtaken every other, their Spotify podcast has taken over. Um, it's bigger than their Facebook, their Instagram. They have more <laughs> listeners, more people engaging with that than anything else that they're doing. But um, it just seems this trend for like personable, relational, um, instead of us just like spraying our message to the audience and wanting people to engage shallowly. I think pe people are wanting to, um, yeah, for, for it to be more engaging, to have a dialogue. Um, I know um, elsewhere in our ministry in Eastern Europe is currently doing some um, campaigns that involve um, a messaging strategy using um, ads on, on Facebook that start a chat bot in Messenger. So this is a little bit out of the beginner space, but there's some really interesting things we can do um, to there. So, um, and one last question for you, Maddie. Um, do you have any advice? I kind of gathered this from um, another thing that um, James wrote. Um, for those who are trying to reach some of these more hard to reach audiences, um, if we're looking at the grid, the far low and left unaware, people who are unaware of our ministry and may have no spiritual background or interest, um, what advice do you have for, um, for engaging them well? Hmm. That's a good question. We haven't done too, too much, um, I guess, intentionally to be reaching those kind of like on the lower end. Um, but I guess I'd say to like come at it in like a very kind way and more of like an invitational rather than trying to tell them things that we know <laughs> as Christians. Um, and I think to anticipate also the responses that you might get. So to like be prepared on how to respond in a kind and gracious way too, if they don't agree with the things that you're sharing or trying to uh, reach them with. Yeah, I don't have as much experience with that, but I just say, yeah, have kind of like the posture or tone of being gracious and kind. I think, yeah, just, um, I know the types of topics that you guys delve into regarding mental health, like you've um, it really considered just what are the struggles that um, this persona is going through? Um, what are some of the, I know, yeah, just on the undiscussed podcast that you guys have, just some of the, the topics in the culture. Um, I really mm -hmm. like how you guys right. have engaged um, with those things as well. Mm -hmm. So well, guys, um, we're um, at the end of our time. Thank you so much for listening. Um, if you have um, further questions, I think uh, most of you who were able to access the invite have my email. Um, we have recorded this. So if there are others um, who um, may benefit from this time, we'll, we'll send this out at, um, at the, at, after um, the video is done and um, you can pass it along. So um, thanks for engaging. Thank you so much, Maddie, for preparing this content and sharing um, your experience. So. You're very welcome. All right. Well, I'm going to end this meeting. Okay. okay. Take care, everyone. <laughs> thanks. If you have questions, you can email me if I didn't get to something. Thanks. Awesome. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye.